have talked about using ChatGPT for scientific writing. And I particularly say to use it as a language model to help you create examples to then edit or just generate ideas or to improve your writing. So how does this work with the new GPT detectors that are out there? So today I'm going to introduce you to Writeful's GPT detector. It looks to see if things were created by GPT-3 or ChatGPT. And I'm going to do a few experiments with you looking at how to use ChatGPT in a way that's not really getting detected and why it's not getting detected. So I'm going to take an abstract from my first paper and I'm just going to copy it and I'm going to test if it thinks it was written by ChatGPT. When I put this into the analyzer, all I had to do was paste in my text, press check, and it says there's a 1% likelihood that this came from GPT or ChatGPT, which is true. I actually wrote this myself, and ChatGPT wasn't around when this paper was published. So what happens if we ask ChatGPT to improve our writing? So I'm going to ask ChatGPT to rewrite this abstract. So what I did is I asked, can you please rewrite this scientific abstract in a way that makes it more professional and easier to understand? And then I simply pasted in the abstract. So it now generated a new abstract that's a little bit clearer to understand. So I'm going to copy this and see how it does in this new ChatGPT detector. So this is actually coming out as 1% likely that it comes from GPT-3. And the reason for this is because it's taking language written by a human and basically acting as an editor instead of as a generator. So this is actually a very appropriate use to, instead of hiring an editor or asking your friend to edit, use something like ChatGPT to then edit this. Now, one thing you can do is actually edit this further, make sure that it sounds right, that, that ChatGPT didn't inject anything. Again, never just copy and paste ChatGPT's language, but this is not actually coming across like it is actually generated by ChatGPT. One question is, does this detector even work, right? Like, is it actually just that it doesn't really detect it? So what I'm gonna do instead is I'm gonna open a new chat because if I do it in the same chat, it's going to remember that abstract and I don't want it to. So what I have asked ChatGPT to do is just write a scientific abstract for this paper that's on this topic here. Because if you just ask it to write a scientific abstract, one of the things you need to include in it is results. And if you don't actually have it include the results, then it's not gonna be a good abstract. So I gave it three main results. So I'm gonna copy this and put it into here and run it. So this is 82% likely that it comes from GPT-3 or ChatGPT. Because if you're just giving it information and asking it to come up with the results or generate an abstract, it's gonna be much more easier to detect that you just use GPT-3 for that. Now let's regenerate, but we're gonna use a slightly different mechanism. So I'm gonna come in here, I'm gonna do a new chat. And now what I'm gonna do is if I paste in this whole article, it is not going to run because it's too long. So what I'm gonna do is come into the conclusion because your abstract should mirror your conclusion somewhat. I just copied and pasted in the conclusion section here. And then I said, can you write a scientific abstract for an article that has the below conclusion section? So now if I take this, let's test this for the detection. So now this has dropped significantly. Why? Why is all of a sudden we're still asking it to generate? Why did it drop? And anytime you are giving it more human generated language, it is actually going to replicate the sounding of that human generated language. So because I gave it a conclusion section written by a human, it then basically did the same thing before when we had an abstract and we asked it to edit it. It basically rewrote that conclusion section into something that sounded more like an abstract instead of like a conclusion section. And because of that, it's basically reworking the human generated language in a way that doesn't sound like computer generated language. 
So yes, this GPT detector does actually work well. It's something that you can use whenever you're working with your writing, as I'm sure plenty of journal articles and publishers are going to start implementing these checks. But use ChatGPT as either a starting point or as a way to enhance. Use it as a language model. Don't let it replace your actual thinking. Use it to enhance your own work and you're likely going to get past these detectors because the main thinking part was actually done by you. The tedious task of making it sound better was done by a computer. And so that's always one thing to remember whenever you're working with an AI software is to always use it in a way that it's replacing the tedious tasks of your job, not your ability to actually think in your job. Saying that, if you're struggling on how to write your scientific research article, download my scientific research paper checklist. It's a guide that walks you through how to write your research articles and what you need to actually submit them. If you want to check out my other content on ChatGPT for scientific writing, I will have those videos linked here. And if this video was helpful, please like it and subscribe to the channel to learn how to do your research more efficiently and ethically. I hope to see you in the next video.